the world's number one memory chip provider, Korea is aiming to become a comprehensive semiconductor powerhouse. The chamber is here in Seoul, the fast-paced, thriving capital of Korea, to delve deeper into economic issues that affect your life. I'm your host, Kanita Bajaj. This week, we are going to discuss the future of Korea's non-memory semiconductor industry and its economic impact on the Korean economy with our panelist, Todd Sample, and special guest, Park Chae-gun, professor of engineering at Hanyang University. So for those of you curious about Korea and what goes on around the world, we are here in Seoul, the economic hub of Northeast Asia. So without further ado, let's step into the chamber. government announced three new growth engines to improve the nation's economy. One of them was system semiconductors. The government announced plans to foster the system semiconductor, or more precisely, system IC sector. System Well, welcome to the studio, welcome to the chamber. We've got Todd here today, as well as Professor Park Chae-gun. Welcome as we talk about the hottest and latest economic issues of today. Now, recently, the Moon administration announced three new growth engines, so to say, these projects to kind of bump up the nation's economy one more time. One of them being system semiconductors. Now, reading the articles and, and watching the news, it's quite a hefty subject, you know, these terms are so big, it's hard to digest. And I was wondering what it actually is exactly when it comes to memory versus non-memory and things of that nature. Memory are very familiar to our people because mm -hmm. the Korean semiconductor company is very strong for memory semiconductor business. There are two kinds of memories, DRAM and uh, NAND flash memory, okay? If you have your computers, computer has a CPU as a brain, okay? So CPU calculate data, then you need to save data on DRAM. DRAM is a very fast calculation. If you keep your uh, portals in your smartphone, uh, you use the NAND flash memory. That's two kind of uh, memory, uh, not memory. There are several different types of uh, semiconductors. Too, man, too many types, <laughs> OK? Uh, however, we categorized five different types of non-memory devices. First one is logic devices, like CPU. Another one is uh, analog devices. Smartphone has a display. This, to operate this di display, you need analog uh, semiconductors. Other one is micro component. Another one is discrete devices. Uh, the last one is a sensor. Uh, maybe you use the, your camera, mm -hmm. okay? There are five different types of uh, non-memories. Okay. Actually, the, among these five categories, so many different, so many uh, small-scale right. semiconductors. And we're not gonna ask you to yeah, list them sure, sure. Right so now. So I think for the sake of our audience, if we want to simplify these things a little bit, uh, a memory chip is more like, if we compare it to humans, someone who has a really good memory, while a system semiconductor is someone who processes information and data very quickly. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, all right, so that's pretty simple. So a lot of people know the word semiconductor, but we don't exactly know how they're used. So can you perhaps shine some light on that? 
For example, CPU, mm -hmm. okay, it's uh, like brain. It's like the brain, right. Okay. So they collect all the digital data, mm -hmm. then they calculate, then they order the calculation result to another devices, mm -hmm. okay, like brain. Okay. Uh, but uh, this calculation result should be stored mm -hmm. as somewhere. Right. That's why we need the memories. Okay. okay? Uh, however, the non-memory uh, semiconductor areas, so many different types. Well, even recently, Samsung Electronics also announced um, a huge investment into this industry, 133 trillion won, which is around for US dollars, $112 billion by 2030 to expand this non-memory and foundry business. What do you think kind of compelled our government and also this particular company to step up their game when it comes to focusing in this industry? Industry 4.0 is coming up from 2020 uh, with uh, 5G. Mm -hmm. That's another chance. Another uh, new types of non-memory business coming up. Right. That's why uh, our government and uh, Samsung and SK Hynix mm -hmm. realize, oh, it's coming, another new business. Mm -hmm. That's why they put huge investment. So Korea is known as the world's biggest memory chip maker, but in terms of system uh, semiconductors, what is the market share here in Korea? Uh, well, uh, the Samsung and SK Hynix and other uh, boundary companies in Korea. Uh, for example, Samsung, also one of the uh, uh, non-memory semiconductor companies. They sell the uh, application process and uh, display drive IC and also CMOS image sensors. Okay. Okay? Uh, and also SK Hynix also selling CMOS image sensor and the uh, display drive IC. Mm -hmm. As well as other companies also oh, saying, uh, our Korean uh, non-memory business mm -hmm. uh, focus on only smartphone-related business. Okay. okay. Currently, the market share of non-memory business in global wise mm -hmm. around 8.7 uh, percent. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, our Korean uh, non-memory company focus on only uh, smartphone-related business. Okay. That's why the, in the future, uh, Korean semiconductor company like to expand their business to other areas. Mm -hmm. okay. So when we take a look at the global market, you know, we say Korea is really big and on top, quite frankly, in the memory market. However, in the non-memory market, it seems like Korea is very low. So there is a pretty big gap there. I'm wondering mm -hmm. what that is. You're right. Uh, Korean semiconductor companies very strong for memories. They have a, a more than 70% market share. More than 70% is very dangerous because <laughs> of uh, monopoly issues, right? right? right. So it means that our Korean semiconductor company, they cannot expand memory business more, more and more, okay? However, as you mentioned, our scale of uh, non-memory business is still less than 10%. Very, very low. That's why uh, Korean semiconductor company like to expand uh, to non-memory business. However, Korean non-memory semiconductor company uh, has uh, developed their business for long time because uh, non-memory uh, has very high uh, semiconductor technology are necessary. Therefore, for example, CPU, Intel is too strong. Samsung and SK Hynix, they cannot enter this CPU business. Even AMD, they put a lot of effort, but they still behind than Intel, right? So CPU area is not area for Korean semiconductor companies, mm -hmm. okay? However, smartphone, Korean company, smartphone is very strong, like Galaxy mm -hmm. and LG, right? That's why smartphone also need uh, processor, we call it AP, application processors. That area, a Korean semiconductor company also very strong, like uh, Qualcomm and uh, Apple. Uh, even AP markets, global market, Samsung market share is only 12%. Okay, still Qualcomm is very, very strong. MediaTek is strong, Apple is very, very strong. Another business is a uh, pound business. 
Okay. TSMC, very, very strong company for foundry business. Okay. Now they have a market share more than 50%. Samsung only have less than 20%. That's also another challenging area. Feminist companies, American feminist companies, very, very strong, like uh, Qualcomm's. But Korean companies, very, very weak. Scale-wise, very, very small. Because all of our Korean feminist companies, their business belongs to display related semiconductors. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you know, once again, talking about the, the memory market being on top and non-memory market quite low, uh, it seems that we got to figure out why this is um, and especially why the Korean government and the Korean company recently announced a new strategy um, talking about kind of taking control of this discrepancy as well. So let's find out a little bit on our video. In April, the Korean government proclaimed a vision aimed at growing the system semiconductors business to secure Korea an unrivaled position in both the memory and non-memory semiconductor industries by 2030. Despite Korea's high standing in the chip business already, in the non-memory sector, the country has somewhat lagged behind its global rivals, with a market share in the single digits. So, the government announced it would invest 1 trillion won, approximately 840 million US dollars, by 2030 in developing system semiconductors and nurturing 17,000 specialists. Just before the government proclaimed those ambitions, Samsung Electronics also announced plans to invest 133 trillion won, or $112 billion, by 2030, in the non-memory and foundry sectors to claim the global semiconductor throne. So why are both the government and Samsung Electronics investing such huge amounts of money in system semiconductors? It's because the sector has such potential for growth. Of all the different segments of the non-memory sector, the government is focusing on the foundry business in particular. Currently, the biggest share of the global foundry business belongs to the Taiwanese company TSMC. But Samsung, with its ultra-fine manufacturing tech, is catching up. The government also believes that investment by leading companies like Samsung in the system semiconductor sector will result in the mutual growth of fabulous companies. The current leaders of the non-memory sector, the U.S. and China, have poured in an astronomical amount of funds and support to keep their dominant positions. Driven by collaborative endeavors by the government and industry, Korea is at a pivotal point in its efforts to become the true global semiconductor powerhouse, in addition to being the world's top memory chip provider. So we've talked briefly about, you know, expanding uh, the foundry business here in Korea. And as you've seen in the video, you know, we've been focusing more on the memory chip industry for over the last four decades. But now uh, the focus has been shifted to the system uh, semiconductor or, or the non-memory as we talked about briefly. Is it because the global memory chip market has been going on a downward spiral or what could the reason be? Yes, you're right. Uh... As I mentioned, uh, we have very strong global market share in memory business. Uh, recently, the trade completion between uh, USA and China pushed down the, this uh, memory business because smartphone the market is saturated. However, 5G smartphone, they need uh, different types of application processes. Qualcomm and Samsung will 
compete very, very strongly. And also autonomous vehicle. They need three different types of AP and also 12 CMOS image sensors. And also IoT, they need many different types of sensors as well as AP and AI drone. All of the new area need AP and the sensors. Uh, this is a big chance for uh, new business. Why is Korean semiconductor have a chance? Because all this new business technology related to mobile technology. Mm -hmm. Korean semiconductor companies put lots of investment and effort to develop mobile technology. This mobile technology automatically transport to next generation technology called industry 4.0. Right. So it seems like, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer that Korea should be stepping up their game. We've already conquered the memory and now non-memory is another mountain to kind of climb up. Let's take a look at some numbers. Right. So from the figure perspective, for the first four months of this year, we've seen double-digit negative growth yes. in terms of uh, memory exports from Korea. So what do you think has led to this downturn? Uh, well, uh, there are two issues. Uh, you know, internet data center, they like to expand their uh, memory storage and also they like to upgrade data operation speed. Mm -hmm. In that case, the internet data center needs a more fast CPU from Intel. However, Intel, they have some quality problems for next generation CPU. Mm -hmm. That's why internet data center like Google and Amazon and Facebook, they stop for upgrading. Another issue is market share of a smartphone saturated or slightly goes down. Trade completion between USA and China is another reason to decrease this smartphone company. Maybe end of this year, DRAM price will slightly going up. So again, the system semiconductor sector or, or the non-memory, shall we say. Non-memory is hardly affected by economy. Um, and what you're saying now is that the memory chip industry has so many other external factors that can shift the prices up and down. Uh, current uh, non-memory business, very, very stable because very, very strong guys, they take care of this business. However, we mentioned uh, from 2020s, 5G, okay? Industry 4.0 will make another new business. Okay, this is a new competition, world war for <laughs> new coming number of business. Okay. okay. Uh, we know that Korean companies, big Korean companies, Samsung Electronics, LG Electronics, these, these companies are very strong in their own right. But uh, our viewers who are familiar with Korea will know that historically, Korean conglomerates don't co collaborate with each other. They want to do things by themselves. But we're starting to see some changes now. And recently, Samsung Electronics opened up their foundry fab to Silicon Works, which is an LG affiliate. So this is somewhat unprecedented. Do you think that this kind of win-win strategy is a, a way forward for Korea to become more competitive in the global market? Yes, you're right. Uh, we have to understand the Korean semiconductor company's business structure, okay? Uh, background of Korean semiconductor uh, developed based on the memory business, okay? Memory business need uh, continuous investment. Then the you, you uh, memory business company found the remain process equipment. This, this uh, remain used, used process equipment is very, very useful for non-memory business. For example, CMOS image sensor, drive IC, okay? Uh, that's why the Korean the semiconductor company like to keep the very strong position in memory market, okay? Then they will invest continuously. Then they found the remaining used equipment, process equipment. They have used this, this equipment for another business. Oh, another business means non-memory business. Okay. Kind of recycling. Yes, you like recycling, recycling business. business. Okay. Uh, another uh, non-memory uh, business we call the high-end business. 
as we mentioned, uh, something very strong for application processes. Okay, this also need a huge investment. Okay, but market share competition is very strong between Qualcomm and the right. Apple's. Right, they also have to invest continuously. Then they also they found the remaining process equipment. Okay, this should be used for foundry business. Mm -hmm. They have to open to survive. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why they open to welcome any feminist company, even Silicon Works. Okay, we are welcome. We can supply. Uh, as I mentioned, AP is a very important business for the future. AI need AI types of AP. Mm -hmm. AI need AI types of AP. IoT, IoT types of AP. Many different types of AP. Okay. Uh, Samsung uh, foundry business, they open for any different kind of AP applications. This is a good chance for family's company. Okay. Okay. So with this opening of doors, do you think there could be other ways to kind of nurture the, this memory market? I mean, we talked about, again, the announcement when the Korean government and Samsung started saying, we're going we're gonna to tackle these challenges ahead. Is it... Are these all the answers that are necessary? Are these all the solutions? The most important thing is big investment. Okay, Samsung announced their big investment, mm -hmm. uh, 110 billion until 2020. SK Enix also announced their big investment, 120 billion for until 2030. Investment is very important. Uh, government also they announced they like to support. Okay, uh, however. We need professional people, <laughs> okay? Unfortunately, people think semiconductor is very, very difficult, okay? Young people don't like semiconductors. I don't like this conversation, <laughs> you know? It's a tough, it's a tough uh, topic. Why is the young people, they think semiconductor is very difficult? Sure. Why they don't like uh, semiconductors? Mm -hmm. There are main reasons, for example, uh, even semiconductor company uh, put uh, 20 billion uh, US dollars for one factory. Mm -hmm. Okay, number of operating people uh, this factory only 200 people. Only 200 people. Therefore, semiconductor company need R&D people. Okay, not technicians. So I guess uh, what you're saying is we need more smart people in, mm. <laughs> in our company. And also for, uh, if really the Samsung and the SK Hynix like to, they, they like to be successful in the non-memory business, they need the analog circuit designers, okay? Right, so of course intelligence is not defined solely by academics and things of that nature. However, as you said, you know, it's all about this design that we need to master. So if we combine that with sufficient investment, with more money and government support, do you think Korea can actually one day claim the throne of being the top when it comes to world's number one chip provider over all sectors of this industry? I hope so. <laughs> really. One can only hope. Yeah, yeah. So new coming business, really we, are, we have a chance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why uh, companies and the government, university, all of them support this new chance. Then maybe in 2030, Korean semiconductor company uh, would be like uh, Intel. Sure. It is 10 years away, yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's a long time if you mm -hmm. want to keep going for the goal. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Park. Do you have anything to add as well? Historically, why is Korean company very strong this memory business? Because of very good people, mm -hmm. okay? That's why the university and government company, we are looking for excellent people, excellent students. Well, there you go. Okay, inspirational yeah. words to wrap up today's discussion, Absolutely. I guess. Absolutely. Well, thank you once again as we zoomed in in this very tough topic to dissect, talking about the next growth engines of the Korean economy. 
systems, semiconductors, memory, non-memory markets, and things of that nature. Well, for decades, Korea has been the world's number one memory semiconductor provider, and we'll see if the country can rise to become the real number one in all segments of the chip industry. Thank you once again. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. If you have any questions or comments regarding Korea's economy, feel free to join us on our social media account. Wherever you are, there we will be. On this note, we'll wrap up this episode of The Chamber. We'll see you next time, same time and same place on The Chamber. And